All right, 9.2 problems. Uh, don't forget, there's a pause button for a reason because I hit the ground running and don't really slow down. So let's check this out. Sine of zero over zero. Hey, zero over zero, we can do L'Hopital's rule and keep that limit as x approaches zero. Five cosine of five x over one. Cosine of zero is one, we get five. Plug in one, we get zero over zero. So let's limit as x approaches one. On top, we get one third x to the negative two thirds. One third minus one is negative two thirds over one. Plug in one, we get one, and the one third comes along for the ride. Plug in pi over two, sine of pi over two is one, we get zero over. One plus zero. Oh, my bad. Pi over two is one plus negative one, zero. All right, let's go. Limit as theta goes to pi over two. Negative cosine of theta. Negative two sine of two theta which is cosine of pi over two, negative zero, negative doesn't really matter. Sine of pi, zero, there's a zero there too. Okay, do it again. Limit as theta approaches pi over two. Uh, that's supposed to be a theta. Derivative of cosine is negative, so we'll see it with the negatives. The sine is cosine, so we get negative four cosine two theta. Plug in pi over two, we get one. Plug in pi over two, we get cosine of pi is negative, we get four. One fourth, limit as x approaches two, plug it in, you will get zero over zero. So we do limit as x approaches two, 2x minus 4 over 3x squared minus 12. Plug in 2, we get 0 over 0. Keep going. Gives me 1 sixth. All right. Evaluate the one side limits, support your answer graphically as needed. So here we get zero over zero. So we can do L'Hopital's rule. Watch out for this plus thing. Four cosine of four X, two cosine of two X equals four over two. There are no negatives to worry about. We just get two. Here we get zero over zero. This looks like the same problem. It is the same problem. Notice that once is negative, which I couldn't read. This one says positive, same problem. And by that, I don't mean that it's exactly the same. I mean, you're gonna get the same solution. Limit as x approaches zero, tangent of zero is zero over zero. So on the positive side, we're coming down. So this would be positive zero. Here it's just zero. Well, positive zero if we're gonna do x squared. But I don't really worry about that and you don't need to either. Secant squared x over two x, which is one over cosine squared x over two x. Plug in. 
zero and cosine of zero is one. So we end up with one over zero. Okay, now, like I said up here, we're both coming from the positive side, but I gotta think this one through a little bit. Now this is a negative, doggone it, why can't I read these things? That's it, getting my glasses on. Just hope I don't show up on video with my glasses on. I would look, um, you know, even smarter than I am now. That would scare people. So negative side, negative side, uh, negative or negative is positive. So I don't know. I'd have to graph this. And if you graph it, you will see that you get to negative infinity. Hey, look at that. Same problem from the positive side. So we will get to. Positive infinity. Definitely graph this to see what's going on. Uh, I'm not doing it because you should know how to graph. Off we go. So identify the indeterminate form and then do the whole Wapi Tal thing. So plug in pi over two and you will get one plus one over zero over one over zero, which is Basically, infinity over infinity. Hey, we can do L'Hopital's rule. Derivative is secant limit as x approaches pi over 2. Secant of x, tangent of x over secant. Didn't we already do this? Secant, and you plug in pi over 2. Actually, no, we're not there yet. Limit as x approaches pi over 2. Sine over cosine. One over cosine. You just end up with sine of x. Plug it in, you get sine of pi over two, which is one. Limit as x approaches infinity, ln of x plus one. Plug in infinity, and you get infinity over infinity. Uh, we're getting into our next lesson here somewhat. All right, let's do some calculus limit as x approaches infinity, one over x plus one, no chain rule. Don't remember how to do this one, so let's see if I can figure it out. I believe it's one over x, and then since it's not natural log, you have to slap this element of two in there. So this, of course, equals a limit as x approaches infinity of x ln of two over x plus one. Plug in infinity, I get infinity over infinity. Hmm, all right, do it again. Limit, x approaches infinity, over the top. Remember, it's not a quotient rule. Just ln of two, just one, ln of two. Which seems totally bizarre, but hey, this is what it is. This will give you infinity over infinity. We should know this ends up being five sevenths. So let's see if it does. Derivative. Limit as x approaches infinity of 10x minus 3 over 14x. Plug infinity, yep, again, limit as x approaches infinity of 10 over 14 is 5 over 7. Whoops, sorry about that. Hey, you got 5 over 7. Nice. Keep going. Indeterminate form. This will give me infinity times tangent of one over infinity tangent of zero, which is zero. Okay, limit as x approaches infinity. Let's take this. Now oh, we're gonna change this to x is zero. We're gonna try that little trick, which I'm not a fan of, but uh, it creates a fraction, so I guess it makes sense. One over x tangent of x. Uh, which is zero over zero. So derivative tangent, secant squared x over one, which is one over one, which is one. Over here, we get natural log of infinity minus natural log of infinity which is infinity 
minus infinity. Okay. Um, how do we figure out a way to make this into a fraction? Well, before I start doing calculus, let's do a little algebra. Ln minus can be Ln of 2x over x plus 1. Black, which, um, oh, I don't like the way this is going to end up. I know the answer, but I don't like it. It's going to be infinity over infinity. I could just do the inside. Yeah, I don't like this. I'd probably do an E thing and then LN it at the end. Um, yeah, let's do that. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. This uh, should be interesting. So let's go limit of X to infinity. We slapped an E in there. And now we get two X over X plus one. So we can do limit as x approaches infinity of two over one, which is two. And now we go with, since we put an e in there, ln of two. That's pretty cool. Yes, that'll work. All right. This is x to the one over zero, which is it's not x, it's one. Uh, when we plug in one, we get one to the one over zero, which is one to the infinity, which is weird. So let's take natural log. And that gives us X and then the uh, one over X minus one goes out front. Um, so now we say, let's go with limit as X approaches one of ln of X over X minus one. It gives us zero over zero. So let's go do calculus. Limit as X approaches one, one over X over one, which is one. Don't forget you took a natural log E to the one. Also known as E. Okay. Limit as X approaches is uh, zero to the zero. Let's take a natural log and throw the X out front. Fortunately, that doesn't help us because I don't have a fraction yet. So let's go with a limit as X approaches zero from the positive side, which is not gonna matter. LN of sine over, come on boys, sine of X over one over X. Now life gets weird. Do some calculus. That's one over sine of X times cosine of X because of chain rule. And that's X to the negative first is negative X to the negative second. Okay. Uh, before I do more calculus, let's move this around zero from the positive side. Uh, that would be like throwing X squared up top. And that would actually, I'll leave one X down below one over X and I'll bring the sine of X down and I'll throw one up top. So I would get X cosine of X over negative sine of X over X. Which point most students are like, Mr. T, that's gotta be cheating. And I, yeah, I'm not gonna argue. Limit is uh, this approach to zero is one with the negative front will be negative one. And this is zero, zero over negative one. So, we get zero, yay, done, don't forget, took a natural log, e to zero is one. Wow, I'd be graphing a lot of this to make sure that I'm happy with the way the answers are working out. Okay, this is infinity to zero. That's weird. Sure. Um, let's take natural log, natural log. Can we do that? Is that legal? Uh, that'll put the one over X out front, which is natural log of natural log of X over X calculus one over LN of X times inside one over X over one. That is so weird. Um, plug in infinity. I get zero. 
done. Now, d to the zero is one. I'm gonna put a little break in here. Woo! Deep breath done. All right. Should be about it, yeah. Oh, boy, give a lot of problems. I would actually probably stop right there. I think that's more than enough problems. But I'll zip through this. Be complete. 0 0.159, 0 0.167, 0 0.167, 0 0.16. You know what? I think this is basically 1 sixth. All right, let's prove it. Uh, zero minus sine of zero over zero equals zero over zero. So I'm just throwing this up here. One minus cosine of x over three x squared. Still zero over zero. Uh, keep going. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Negatives cancel. Sine of x over six x zero over zero keep going cosine of x over six is one sixth holy cow who do, does these problems they're insane i'll just throw my limit here for the one time if this freaks you out don't just means we're coming at it from one side in case we get into an asymptote situation all right way too many problems we're going to keep this simple one over zero minus one over zero so, do a little common denominator, t minus sine of t over t sine of t. Since we know this, we know that we got to take the derivative. We get 1 minus cosine of t over t cosine of t plus sine of t. We have done calculus to it, and we still get, oh no, we do it again. Limit as t approaches, I finally put my limit in. Sine of t over negative t sine of t, I really should have made this much bigger, plus cosine of t plus cosine of t. Plug in zero, sine of zero by two, sine of zero, zero. So we get zero over two, which is just zero. Wow, this is infinity over infinity. All right, let's do limit as x approaches infinity. One minus four x over six x plus five. Uh, is still infinity over infinity. Limit as x approaches infinity of negative four over six is negative two thirds. This gets me zero over zero. So let's do some calculus. One over one over t minus pi cosine of pi t. Ouch. Um, which is plugging in one. 1 over 1 minus cosine of pi is negative 1, negative pi. 1 over 1, pi plus 1. Crazy times. Blast this out. You should get negative infinity over negative infinity. Right, because when you go to from the positive side, you can't go from negative side. So that's written into the problem for a reason. Okay, let's do some math. One over y squared plus two y times two y plus two. That's just the top. Over one over y. All right, let's see what happens here. That means that the y comes up and I'll factor it two out of y plus one y comes up and I'll factor a y and leave me with y plus two, see ya, see ya. And 
I got I'm sorry, I just have to do that. Two y plus one over y plus two. One, two over two. Hope you're enjoying this. Such a joy to do. Highly complex math. Negative infinity plus infinity equals. Now we got this trick again. Ln of x over sine of x, which I can't do anything with because it's not a fraction. So I could rewrite it. I'm going to do my e trick again. I'm going to go with e. I'm going to apply e. No idea if that's correct. And I get the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine of x, which is the limit from the positive side. As x approaches 0 of 1 over sine of x over x, which is 1 over 1. Hey, done one. Try again. Ln of 1 equals 0. Yeah. Um, here we go. We get 1 over 0 to the 0, which is infinity to the 0. All right, x, we apply the ln, 1 over x squared. So let's do limit as x approaches 0 of ln of 1 over x squared for 1 over x. Getting some nasty math now. Limit x approaches 0. Oh, here we go, 1 over 1 over x squared. times, that would be negative two to the x to the negative third, over negative one over x squared. Holy mackerel, x squared popped up, we got positive x squared, x squared popped up. We got x to the fourth, x to the fourth times x to the negative third is x Negatives cancel, still have a two around. Plug in zero, we get zero. Hey, we're done, no. We took LN, so E to zero is one. That's not a negative. Oops, sorry about that. Woo, one to go. All right, so we get zero over zero. Which is, uh, do some calc, seven cosine of seven X over 11 secant squared of 11 X. All righty, which is the equivalent. So let's get our limit in here. Uh, that's one over cosine squared, throw it up there. Seven cosine of seven X, uh, 11 times seven. No, the 11 stays down. Uh, secant squared becomes cosine squared 11 X over the 11. Plug in zero, one, one, we end up with seven over 11. This is gonna get you zero to the zero. Uh, let's do that ln thing, cosine of x, ln of cosine of x. Let's write that as ln cosine of x. And we gotta be dangerous, we gotta be careful here. That's one over cosine of x. Cosine of x is the negative first, but that looks an awful lot like our cosine, which is not what we're doing. Derivative of one over cosine of x is negative sine of x. And then x approaches pi over two from the negative side over cosine of x all over negative, because it's cosine of x to the negative first, negative, so now it's gonna be over 
cosine of x squared. Yes, I should just wrote in cosine squared x, but I'm trying to be careful. And derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. All right, see ya. Still negative up there. Flippy floppy, bye. Uh -huh. Cosine comes all the way up. Limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the negative side. Negative cosine of x is 0. Don't know. E to 0 is 1. Complicated stuff. Infinity. This equals 0 to the 0. Bring it down with that ln of sine of x trick. Make it a fraction. Do your calculus. 1 over sine of x times the derivative over negative, because tangent x is negative 1, um, tangent squared, derivative is secant squared. Lots of calculus coming our way now. Negative cosine of x over sine of x, bringing that negative up, times 1 over would be cosine squared x here. And it flips up and becomes over 1, comes sine squared x, squared x, that's that one, that's that one. Let's see, bye, bye. All righty. I don't think I ever put my limit in. So limit as x approaches 0 from negative side. Gone, gone, gone. Negative cosine of x. Sine of x is 0. D to the 0 is 1. Very unsatisfying. All that work and all get is 1. OK. Limit as x approaches infinity. I love this. Like, what the hell? There's no way I could ever do this. Well, let's see what happens. We can integrate that. Let's go ahead and do it. Limit as x approaches infinity of ln of 2x minus ln of x, right? OK, which is infinity minus infinity. This, by the way, is a good problem for you to practice because it's not that different. Uh, well, we actually can rewrite this before we do that. At which point you're probably like e to the ln of t. No, we didn't. We didn't actually take a natural log or anything. By the way, we could go e and then do this and that and get ln later. Yeah, that works too. All right, x approaches infinity. We get infinity over infinity. So limit as x approaches infinity of four x plus three, three x squared. By the way, this better be zero. Three x squared plus one which is infinity over infinity. And limit as x approaches infinity, 4 over 6x is 0. Because we know this prior, prior work. OK, limit as x approaches 1. Put in 1 on top, we get 0. Put in 1, 0. OK, take the derivative of the top. You just get. 1 over t. Derivatives cancel, no chain rule in here. Derivative of the bottom, 3 uh, x squared. Oh, we plug in x. My bad. 3 x squared, which is limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over 3 x to the third. Plug in 1, we get. Wow, that was fun. 
Let's do this again, never. <laughs>